Garland. He's a senior fellow at the Independent Institute and director of its Center on Peace and Liberty. It's a pleasure to have you on the show uh, here, um, Ivan. Now, Turkey clearly has high expectations from uh, Sweden and Finland, and they are expecting them to act on this agreement that they've signed uh, between each other. How soon do you think Turkey will test uh, the waters, and will Sweden and Finland uh, live up to expectations? Well, it's hard to you know say what countries will do, but I think the Finns and the Swedes have an overwhelming interest in doing that since their security, they've really been jarred by this uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. And I think they really want to get into NATO. And I think Tur Turkey, had, you know, they pretty much bowed to Turkey's uh, um, um, demands, mm -hmm. uh, given the Turkish concerns. And so I think uh, they have an incentive, I think, to uh, live up to the agreement. You never know about countries what they'll do, but it seems like the incentives are uh, in Turkey's favor because um, they, you know, they have a veto power. Essentially, every uh, country in NATO has to approve uh, of new P new countries coming in. So, uh, and and like I say, uh, Sweden and Finland no normally kind of well, Sweden's neutral and Finland's uh, sort of neutral, and mm. so uh, they really this is a big step for them, and they're very they're very shaken by this invasion, and they want NATO's protection. So Turkey had a, had a good hand to play in the negotiations. Help us better understand, if you can, here the process uh, moving forward for Sweden and Finland. Now we know that Turkey has now uh, removed its veto that it had uh, put forward. So what steps does Sweden and Finland have to go through, and how long can we expect this process to last for? Well, the, the uh, uh, Finns and Swedes don't have any problem with being democracies. That's always a, can, can be a catching uh, problem, you know, a, a lingering problem, but not with these two. And I think, you know, it'll be, you know, standardization of weapons uh, and, and really what Turkey was complaining about is that, uh, you know, that the, uh, the export, arms exports that have to be, you know, allowed in all the countries. Uh, if you're in an alliance, you have to allow other uh, other countries. You can't be protectionist with arms exports. So I think that's a major, a major thing. You know, there's ver various uh, uh, training requirements, et cetera. I mean, you don't just get NATO protection mm -hmm. without earning it as far, but, the, but in this case, it'll be mainly military things, but you know, the right. Finns are very capable for a small force already. And um, I mean, the Swedes are no slackers either. So I think uh, that will go uh, more quickly than some countries like Macedonia or whatever, both the political and the military, but it's mainly right. military requirements on, in these two countries, not political. Right, and Russia's incursion into Ukraine clearly didn't uh, prevent NATO's expansion in the region. How do you think Russia is going to respond? Well, I think, you know, this is very counterproductive to what Putin was kind of trying to achieve. I'm not saying that Putin didn't have some legitimate security concerns, but he, he had really no right to invade another sovereign country over them. And uh, he's made himself in a worse position simply because not only are these two countries coming into NATO, but NATO is beefing up its forces in the countries that are near, very near Russia. And also, uh, Putin has uh, inflamed Ukrainian nationalism. And, you know, you could, there was some Ukrainian nationalism before and, and dislike of Russia, but I think it's turned into hatred of Russia. And I don't think uh, Ukraine is ever going to return to the to uh, being friendly with Russia in a long time. So I think uh, both the Ukrainian nationalism and the fact that NATO has become stronger, there's more countries in it, mm -hmm. and they're now beating up the uh, forces on uh, uh, Russia's, uh, in the near abroad there for Russia. So I don't think in the long term, this is one of the bigger effects of uh, Putin's blunder into, uh, into Ukraine. Right, okay, hi, Vanny Lynn. Thank you so much for joining us here on TR2 World and sharing that insight with us. Thank you.